I guess that's what we can do with all the boxes. We can create forts, huh, Chloe? So that's what we can do with all of this basically trash from Wizards of the Coast. So we are not out of the weeds yet with Magic the Gathering with the, uh, what I like to call the printing hell of 2021, 2022, 2023 era of the glutton of products that Wizards of the Coast came out with. They basically created a product for every, well, that was their goal. Their goal was to create a product for everybody. So new players to completely enfranchised players to everything in the, in the, in between, they wanted to create a product. And this is kind of what happens with the rejected product. So there was a sale, a flash sale that was just going on for like one day. And I took as much advantage as possible as I could for my patrons to get what is in the contents of these boxes. Uh, but spoiler, what's in them is basically this crap. So theme boosters. So there's going to be boxes and boxes. I believe it's like $6,000 worth of uh, theme boosters and uh, challenger decks. So I got some little funny comments about like, I hate these things. I've, I've stated multiple times how much I think that the, the challenger decks were such a bad idea of Magic the Gathering of uh, when they created them, they created them too late to really have enough time to play with them. And they simultaneously nuked the local scene at the time. I mean, I think Kitchen Table, you guys watch Kitchen Table uh, TCG, really good uh, YouTube channel, go check him out. He talks behind the scenes kind of like what I do. Uh, he was talking the same thing about how uh, Magic Gathering is just focused so much on the commandification of Magic, where they didn't really support events and really just what they did is they just, the, the whole culture shifted when they pumped so much money into uh, even sponsoring more commander players. Events had the whole command, uh, like Commander Fest. They did Command Fest, right? They did a bunch of uh, stuff for Commander in like 2021 when they started put, like creating all the products. And so when they simultaneously started doing these things like these uh, Challenger decks or the theme boosters, they were just such a miss because they just didn't have a home now for the vast majority of players that have been turned to Commander. So, I mean, Chowder Decks, I still think, would have been a, a decent idea if these suckers would have been pretty much exclusive to the events that were being run. So right now it's the RCQ season, so they should release like a Pioneer Challenger deck that can be an entry level into people to play at your local game store. And then they should double down, triple down, quadruple down on running Pioneer events and have something to do with the Challenger decks and things like that. Um, the... Again, the biggest issue I've had with a lot of Challenger decks, especially Pioneer, is, and now I'll keep arguing until I'm blue in the face of a lot of people, is Pioneer's not an entry level uh, format. Typically, Pioneer's like, okay, what do I do with my rotated cards? So when you create Pioneer Challenger decks, you're just adding to more of the mess or more of the kind of overprinting already of, of those cards in those pools. Pioneer is kind of created for a format for you to play with your cards that are no longer usable. And so if you create no longer usable cards, for a format because you're giving usability, is usability even a word? I mean, it's just <laughs> kind of adding to the problem there with that thing. So again, and, and that's, we'll, we'll always disagree with a lot of, because coming from a, a store owner perspective or someone that's kind of in this market, that wants to see a healthy ecosystem, I always will argue with people that Wizards of the Coast definitely needs to look at their supply, look at their demand, um, look at the secondary market and make wise decisions because they are the ones that made this a collectible card game. They are the ones that attached $200 price tags on collector boosters. They are the ones that attached, you know, now upwards to what $125 prices to, and this is distributor price to play boosters. And so those those products need to hold their value. They need to be able to uh, be justified as a purchase. Otherwise, you get this kind of stuff where now it's just doesn't really have a home and breaking it down for singles is really the only route to go and that just causes more of an issue with wizards in the in the future actually printing product that people want to open if these this dead product is still competing with their newer product so again i've i've, I've talked and talked and talked about this um theme boosters were just terrible they were uh worse than booster packs that were actually uh more expensive than booster packs and the whole idea with them was to uh, you could just supplement your, oh, I'm building a, a, a red deck. Okay, here's some uh, theme booster for my red deck. But, I mean, they're so unintuitive. They were so uninspired. It was just a bunch of random cards. And oftentimes, you would get up to three, four, five of the same uncommon. Well, if you have five of the same uncommon already from one pack, you can get, you have no home for that last common. And it was just, a lot of times, trash. And this, this era, this era back here when they were doing theme boosters, like nowadays, they're getting a little bit better with what I call draft trash. 
um, where they don't print cards, especially like specific cards now, if you can think about like, there's always gonna be a bear, there's always gonna be a naturalized, there's always gonna be a uh, plummet, those type of cards in the set because they need them for kind of the limited experience. But now like in the latest sets, they've, they've added, they've kind of pushed those, what we call situational cyborg cards or kind of draft trash. They've, they've given them at least some more interesting mechanics. So like in this set with, with the Cowboys, they're gonna at least make it a mercenary or, and, and just do something with mercenaries coming in. So they'll create that bear and then it will have a little bit of an upside. So, you know, there's no more of the gray ogres. There's no more of the four, four flyers for four, for five type thing. They're, they're at least, they're adding some oomph to them. So they're not so uh, vanilla. Uh, however, this era when they did theme boosters was just plagued with a bunch of vanilla cards. So if you actually open up these theme boosters, you get a lot of vanilla cards that don't even have a home right off the bat. Like the whole premise to the theme boosters, you could just add some lands and have a deck to go. You, you open your cards, you have enough cards, add some lands and go. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's a good clickbait experience to like a brand new player to, to oh, let's just both grab a theme booster. But then they like did jumpstart, which had the lands in there, had the the, the deck's ready to go, and I, I hated Jumpstart. I absolutely hated that product. I'm one of the very few people that, that, that thought this product was just, again, lazy. Like, it, 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 I, I actually don't, going back to Challenger decks, going back to Theme Boosters, I don't hate the idea of doing them. I don't think that they, they would be necessarily horrible uh, if they did them properly. Theme Boosters, again, uninspired. Uh, whatsoever. They could have done some really cool things with them. They could have actually done a theme, which is, again, what they end up doing with Jumpstart to begin with. But uh, if they want to do like colors, yeah, they could do like a color theme in those particular ones. Again, that's what happened with Jumpstart later down the road. Uh, there just wasn't enough variety of them. And again, they're quite boring. And I think the main thing that people hate about the, the more recent Jumpstart is they they said there were 10 different decks with, you know, for two per color. But then we looked at the deck list, they're basically the same thing for each color. So there's only five different stuff. And again, there's just get so much repetition, um, which which gets rid of the whole concept of boot of like sealed booster packs of the variety of, of what the, you know, the contents. So if you were to buy a whole Jumpstart, you would expect to have, you know, a lot of different themes in there and you know playing different packs every time you open them would be a new exciting thing uh whereas you know you get such so many re repetitive stuff and the same thing with these theme boosters that was the same thing so again what ends up happening after my little rant this happens so the the the, the distributors just get absolutely overloaded with them to the point where you know these are old products now they're two three four years old now for some of these challenger decks some of these theme boosters and they're still rotting at the distribution levels because distributors have been a little bit um, like they don't want to take losses either. And I get, again, I don't know exactly how it works with Wizards of the Coast, how, how, how they pass these on maybe to distributors. I know, I know if distributors reorder them, uh, from Wizards, oftentimes Wizards gives them deals, but this original stuff, and you got to remember, this was a time period where every product was such a knockout of the park. Like, like it was, it, it was tough in 2021, 2022 to find any sealed magic gathering product. Like everything was going through the roof because we were just in that idiotic time period of free money where everything was liquid gold. Everything was better than your US dollar because of, of how you know, horrible the currency is being devalued by overprinting of it. So like, people were just buying, they're, they're throwing so much crypto, they're throwing so much money into collectibles because collectibles were going through the roof. And so again, it, it created kind of that missed signal that theme boosters probably were better than they actually were, or any of these products were. And again, Wizards didn't really have to try during that time period. The same thing with Pokemon. The worst Pokemon products were selling during that time period. And now we're back to an era where all of the, the, the starter decks from Pokemon, a lot of these like, um, these premium collections, these kind of type, type of things, they have been rotten on the shelves forever. Because the, in an age where the, the printing is still massive, you're gonna have clear winners of products that people want. And in Pokemon, it's boosters, it's booster boxes. That's the product people want. They don't want the rest of it. It's your best bang for your buck. Even at a higher price, you still pay less per booster pack. People are still chasing the, uh, the kind of the rare secrets in Pokemon. And so, it's better just to go the booster pack route. And so the, that's the product gets bought. The rest of the stuff starts to rot. Same thing with Magic Gathering. Eventually, you're gonna have the products that actually work and don't work. And of course, this, this sucker happens. So like a, what I say is we're not out of the weeds is I really, 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 really suspect that there is so much supply still from that 2020, 2021, 2022 era that still needs to enter the market from those sets. And, and where does it end? Where does the landfill end of these cards? And eventually the chickens are gonna come home to roost meaning that these are going to be open. They are going to end up on the, the secondary market. And the problem was the coast that I was hoping is they were going to kind of scale back on the reprints and scale back on 
uh, and you know, creating stuff to go into the supply, maybe like if I was the coast, I would cut my, my print runs dramatically, drastically, and probably focus more on more of the premium end products. So you can still scoop up the money, you can still get the money, but really, really, really let the market have some breathing room for this sort of stuff. These type of, of cars, again, are eventually gonna enter into the secondary market and start competing with the new cars to uh, be able to be scooped up by demand. And it's gonna take a long time. Like, like again, I don't know how much of this, this, this era stuff is still stuck on the market and is gonna take just absolutely years, if not decades, uh, for that, that kind of breathing room to, um, yeah, or, or for, for these, these, these things actually be sold and whatnot. So again, this is just what ends up happening here. Maybe I'll open up a couple of these. We're gonna put this stupid thing and you can see, see if I can adjust this up. Look at me all getting all good with this camera. Um, yeah, I'll try to show some of the stuff in here. Uh, let me give you some ideas of pricing. It was like 25 bucks for theme boosters, which I, I still don't know if that's actually worthwhile to get theme boosters for. Oh, I got a knife here. We won't use keys. We'll use a, we'll use a, an actual thing to cut this open. But anyway, um, yeah, so these, I don't even know if they're still even worth it at like 20 bucks for an entire theme booster um, worth of, of stuff. And I'll open up a theme booster here just in a second to kind of give you an idea. Okay, so here, oh yeah, here we go. Here's another product that is very unintuitive and is still, like these suckers, they are, they're still these Omega Packs. These are Kamigawa Omega Packs. So the collector boosters are actually kind of expensive now for Kamigawa because Kamigawa is, is probably a, a set that's gonna age well because of like Bazeju's. If they, re, um, if Wizards of the Coast can, um, they, they don't have the temptation of reprinting like Bazeju and a bunch of other these cards that are actually worth money. Uh, but collector boosters, you can still get like the inked, aren't they called the inked or the, what are they called, the neons that are still in there. But the Mega Packs, I do I have a Mega Pack lying around here somewhere. They're just super bulky. Uh, maybe I'll open up this. I think I don't know if someone wanted this in a case or not. All right, we'll open this up. So I'll show you the Mega Pack and I'll actually open up a Mega Pack and, and see how... And this kind of stuff is so stupid too, because you got to think that like Wizard of the Coast just doesn't make any sense to me with how they're like, obviously collector boosters were such a knock out of the park because you, you can't tell me to um, print a collector booster is more expensive. Like this collector booster right here to print it. We're just talking about actual costs. So if you actually look at Wizard of the Coast, they have two costs. They have their, their, their design costs, like all the employees they have to pay and all their marketers and everything else for a set that comes out, the artwork and things like that. And then of course, their, probably their biggest cost, I would say, is just their margins between what it costs their printers to print something and how much they sell it for. So you can't tell me that a collector booster is more expensive to print than like these theme boosters or like I always made the comparison to the starter decks. Those are the things that starter decks they sold. So Wizards of the Coast is making profit on those little starter decks at the uh, price of like three bucks, like is what they gave them to distributors. So they, they, you still gotta think that they made some sort of profit off of the uh, starters that they did for like every set. I mean, I think this came out with some of Carl of Manor too, or maybe, yeah, Carl of Manor had starters with it. So they're making profit off of those that had two 60 card decks in them and at three bucks. So you got to think of the insane margins they're probably making off the collectors. And so, you know, that's, that's what kind of makes sense that they're going that route just because of the printing, like printing has got to be the most expensive part of, of this, this stuff. So it just like, these suckers just don't make any sense to me because you got to see the material in these Versus the material in these, of course, as you know, there's more individual cards, but just, just the bulkiness, the cardboard and the, the printing of this box cost money to do so. And it's got to cost money, like a good comparative to the cards in them. So these Omega Packs just made absolutely no sense to me. What they did, I know that they just sat on little Walmart shelves. Like these did not go to LGSs. These went first to the, oops, I got it upside down. Uh, these went first to the big box stores like the Targets and the Walmarts so they can sit on the checkout aisle or wherever, you know, they, they, they put their, Walmart typically has that one aisle right before the checkouts. Um, so they can just sit there and look like, oh, wow, I can buy some, oh, what's in this, this box, this big old box. There's got to be so many magic cards 
in this box here. And then you get one stinking pack, one pack out of this massive like waste of, of product here. And it's, you know, has sticky crap all over it. And you get one collector pack is, is what you get for your mega pack. And so of course these suckers didn't sell well. They were overpriced for what you got. Um, <laughs> they're bulky. They, everything has to compete in a world where Walmart has limited space and Target has limited space and LGSs have limited spaces. This product just seemed absolutely terrible. So let's see here. I don't know if I'm showing up here. On here, we get anything cool here? No, I'm oh, actually opening up packs for this. We have a March of, of Otherworld Light. You don't know how much I hate this card. Uh, a Research Thief, a Soul Transfer. Nope, we got absolute garbage in here. Nothing cool out of this uh, pack, out of this Collector Booster pack. But yeah, again, this is another rant I need to have for another day about how I think that the market is start, really starting to, to finally kind of reject these collectors, like, because there used to be the foil multiplier um, and so it was cool to get foil cards, but now when you all money, it's still worth it to buy collectors over regular play boosters at this point because they you can pack in the serialized cards and all the other stuff. And so all it does is just saturates the market with with um, borderless and foil and all the other nonsense that they've done. The more those things are no longer special because you just get, you know, like I said, look at this, a billion of them right here in the collector booth. Remember when the land used to be special? Like this, this alternative art, full art land, these suckers used to be kind of special. Like if these were rare, if these were hard to come by, then I think, you know, these would be actually be collectible. But Wizard of the Coast has just absolutely destroyed the collectability of all their stuff. So anyway, I don't know where I'm going with this rant. I think it was just a cool thing to kind of show of, um, yeah, so big old box of heavy thing here. This is probably like, you know, 15 pounds worth of uh, all that stuff has cost, has innate cost in actually making and shipping and storing and stuff. And it's just like a, a massive fail by Wizards of the Coast. So again, I'm hoping they can like tighten their belts, figure out these products aren't working, which I think is so. I think Wizards of the Coast kind of flew too, too close to the sun. They really thought that they could go um, crazy on like printing all of these products and they'll sell no matter what because it's magic the gathering. We can create these crappy theme boosters. Like again, that's my biggest complaint that I've had about Wizards of the Coast is how like it seems like interns are making all their decisions for them. When they come up with like an event, it's like, geez, that's really all you're gonna do for this event? Yeah, um, I still talk about how my pro tour was, I joke about it because they gave a t-shirt to everyone. So I wanted to, to make a t-shirt and said, hey, I made a pro tour and all I got was this lousy t-shirt because it was one of the most sad experiences of my life. Like everyone talks about, oh man, it must be so cool to make a pro tour. Like that's their dream to make a pro tour. And that's how I thought. So I'm, when I made the pro tour and got there, I thought there was going to be a lot. I thought it was going to be lively. I thought it was going to be like things going on, um, like Wizards of the Coast really making kind of like after parties or not like, like after parties in that sense, but like little just events to go on while we're not playing magic when literally the pro tour was just playing magic nonstop for two days straight. And on day three, when it was cut to the top eight, everyone had already left because there was a Grand Prix coming up uh, and they had to prepare for it. And so it was a ghost house on, you know, the, the, the pro tour, the pinnacle, the, 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 the best of the best playing and everyone was gone and they didn't even do much of a, a, like, you know, they, they still streamed it. They still had all the, uh, the casters and whatnot and put it on Twitch. However, like the event itself was a ghost town and it was kind of sad that when, uh, I think Craig Wesco won the pro tour that I went to, when he won, they had already like evacuated the building. Like the building was already like, oh, got to get everyone out. And so they made Craig Wesco go outside, outside the building and were taking pictures of his like pro tour win outside the building because they'd already cleaned up and closed the building <laughs> by the time the, like the dust hadn't even settled and it was just it was just so sad and it just seems like that was kind of the the entire experience i had with wizards of the coast was um like like how they like everything seemed to be that like half-assed that's the best way to put it and so going back to full circle with this video um you know that's what we're dealing with we're dealing with half half assery of products from from wizards of the coast that that could have been cool the Challenger decks could have been more inspired. They could have been more kind of streamlined and focused on what they are supposed to be. The theme boosters could have had some amazing things. I mean, again, just do them like they would have done Jumpstart. And I think they would have been great because that's what they're supposed to be is like supplemental. So like, cool, I have an elf deck. Here's an elf theme deck. Boom, throw it in uh, right there. And again, still they'd have to tighten up supplies. And again, Wizards got so complacent and so... Uh, 
uh, lazy that it seemed like their, their, their strategy was kind of like a scattershot strategy. They're just gonna flood the market with a billion products and who cares, their margins were so massive, who cares if this crap had to end up in landfills or in this case had to, be, had to end up being blown out for pennies on the dollar uh, where now the only, the only purpose that this crap is gonna serve, I guarantee that the patrons that bought these theme boosters are just gonna have like, like I probably, I think one of the big buyers here is gonna crack them all down, they're gonna break them all down and sell the singles because at this point you probably do get more money. I know I do have a big bulk seller where, you know, puts everything up for like 15 cents for commons and 25 cents for uncommons and it's weird. They eventually do sell and you make profit on them because it, at that point you can sell air um, on TCG Player and make a profit if, you know, people pay the, uh, if you put it, if you price it correctly, there's uh, tons of tutorials on how to do that. Um, so, I mean, it's a lot of elbow grease to do so, but I mean, that's where they're going to end up. That is exactly how they're going to end up is, is just, you know, these didn't go, these theme boosters and challenger decks are not going to go into the hands of people that actually want to play them. They are not going to be cracked. The vast majority of them are not going to be cracked to uh, have a play experience. They're going to be cracked for the secondary market. And that's still going back to a couple comments. I can't remember if it was on this channel or my, my Rogue Deck Builder channel or Rogue Market channel or wherever, where I was complaining about Challenger decks. And one of the, the, the comments was like, I'll put my money where my mouth is and buy a bunch of Challenger decks. I'll buy two sealed cases of, well, I mean, I've got thousands of dollars worth of them here. And again, the whole point, my whole point being is, who cares you buy them? They didn't go into a new player's hand. They wanted to play the format. That's what their intended purpose was. They never made it there. They just went right on the secondary market. They were a bad execution, bad idea, at least an inspired idea of how they did them. And uh, with no uh, care from Wiz of the Coast to try to create an atmosphere, an environment where these products can actually succeed, this is what just happens, is the secondary market just has to take, 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 take the wheel and these have to be blown out for, for, you know, again, pennies on the dollar, 75, 80, 90% off of what they originally wanted them. And, and again, really setting themselves up to failure when they create this crap like collector boosters that are just such a better value, no matter how you skin the cat here of, of where the value is, it's gonna be, and collector boosters is gonna be your best million buck. So why even buy the rest of this crap? Anyway, kind of a long little right here. I thought I'd just grab the, the cameras. I'm, I was gonna do unbox and talk. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get better at that so I can actually kill two birds with one stone and actually get some work done. But yeah, let's actually, let's, one more thing here. Let me just show you how terrible, how terrible these theme boosters are. And so I got this, this Caldime one here. This is a good old black Caldime. Okay, we can hit the, we can hit the discard dude, right? The, the god that discards Tegrid that everyone wants. But and bulky freaking pro, uh, product. I guess it's supposed to hang on those little sh checkout stand shelves. And same thing with, with uh, you get this little pack of cards and you get just a glutton full of commons and uncommons here. So it's gonna be right off the bat, it's gonna be commons and uncommons. And then the very back of the pack, oh, we got one, one little sad rare. So sometimes you can get two rares in these, but we got one little sad rare and then ends up, let's see if I can find um, any of these with like, what has the most common in here? Oh, and it's really, really hilarious too. In there is sometimes like black is the theme. So these are supposed to be meant to shuffle up and play. That's, that's the actual point to it. And you'll find like black green cards. Like so a lot of them was with a multicolored set. You actually end up getting like cards you couldn't even play if you added some just, just swamps in here. But you can see it's just like all commons and commons. So this is the stuff that people didn't want anyway in their draft boosters. And, and it just, again, ends up on the market. But there's been some pretty, pretty funny things. I remember I broke these down because I think we were getting uh, Forgotten Realms at one point, the theme boosters for like $15 for a case of them. And so you, on average, you got two deadly disputes out of each pack and there's two packs of that color and they're selling for three bucks at the time. And so you'd end up with $12 from deadly, deadly disputes. So you basically made your money back in deadly disputes and then everything else at that point was profit margin. But again, this stuff is just like, super elbow grease if you have to first of all i quit doing it because it was just so much labor uh, selling singles online like i'm 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 definitely gonna um i'm gonna partner with someone in the future after you graduate from, from college hopefully this is my my goal and uh start like a a, a another online store uh, just because there is value in this and it can make a job i just don't want to be the person that <laughs> has to go through all this and list all these cards like like you are really it is a lot of work like once you get the the rhythm going it's pretty decent but it's like like there's no rest for the weary with it it's constant 
of, of ship me off packages. I mean, it's kind of what I do right now, uh, but at a really, really small scale rate of, of, of doing these. I guess there's some village rights. Is this card still worth anything? Or are they printing a million copies of this sucker? I know they've outclassed it with other stuff. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Kind of a weird ranty video as usual. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.